here the biomass is burning and biomass composition is given as this formula here this formula is given in the form of a generic formula which is cu h v o w n x s y which is for every u molecules of carbon there are v molecules of hydrogen or v atoms of hydrogen w atoms of oxygen and uh, when we learn this material here we would be needing u moles of oxygen for every one carbon we need one mole of oxygen to turn it into co2 same way when we have v moles of atomic oxygen it requires one quarter or half mole of oxygen to combine or v over four moles of oxygen to combine it into uh, VH2O V over two half H2O now we can do this stoichiometry for all these elements here all these meaning sulfur also burns and forms sulfur dioxide so S plus O2 goes to SO2 so one mole of sulfur requires one mole of oxygen so y moles requires y moles you can see that here y moles okay same way one mole of carbon requires one mole of oxygen so u moles of carbon which is there in the biomass here will require u moles of oxygen hydrogen is one quarter so what well, that's what we have from stoichiometry over here if you look at the so you need v over four however there is a negative sign for w which means there is already oxygen built into the molecule here or inside the fuel so we need to reduce that so how many moles are available since there are w atoms here w over two is the number of molecules that are available and you subtract that from here so that gives us the number of moles of oxygen required so this is the number u plus v over 4 minus w over 2 plus y <coughs> excuse me but this oxygen comes along with it every molecule of oxygen comes with it 3.76 molecules of nitrogen or every mole of nitrogen brings along with it 3.76 moles of nitrogen so that is also added here so this is the number of molecules or moles of air that will be coming into the process so following this actually if you calculate here air to fuel ratio down below you can see that very clearly here um, 4.76 so every mole of oxygen brings along with it 3.76 nitrogen together it'll be 4.76 so 4.76 moles come for every mole of oxygen you know air so how much air u plus w over 2 which which is all over here v u plus v over 4 minus w over 2 plus y is the number of moles required for one mole of biomass with this composition over here okay that is one mole of fuel okay this is the number of moles so this is moles of air per mole of fuel but mole of fuel when you multiply by the molecular weight here in the denominator you will get the mass of fuel and air number of moles of air multiplied by molecular weight of air will give us the mass of air so this will give us air mass divided by fuel mass so let's take a look at this little bit here so I know I'm going to actually do a simple problem here and then we can figure this out actually so let's do this
Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, Okay, so if we have a biomass with a composition, for example, carbon here, um, let's see here, uh, carbon C, and we have here, I can write this here, C, H, 1.8, O, 0.57, and nitrogen 0 0.01 sulfur would be very little actually sulfur that'll be let's say we have 0 0.003 sulfur and this one would actually this is the molecule of um, this is the molecule of biomass. When this burns with in enough air, the amount of air that will be required is, according to our formula, air required to fuel will be 4.76 times, right? U, U happens to be the coefficient or uh, number of moles of carbon, which is one here, and then oxygen, which, uh, and then the hydrogen requirement is V over 4, which is 1.8 over 4. And then minus, which is here the W, which is the oxygen. So there is built-in oxygen, so we need to subtract that here too. And then we need to add whatever is required for sulfur. So let's add for the sulfur 0. Point 003. All right, this many moles of air are required for one mole of fuel, biomass. Now, always remember, if we have to convert moles into mass, you need to multiply by molecular weight. So now we multiply this by molecular weight of air, which is 28 point eight four on an average sometimes you can take it as 29 it's not going to make much of a difference and molecular weight of fuel again that is a kind of an unknown here so we need to figure that out here molecular weight of uh, molecular weight of fuel so in this molecule of fuel we have one carbon atom one carbon atom is 12 atomic weight and there are 1.8 atoms of hydrogen so 1.8 times 1 atomic weight of hydrogen plus uh, or in, uh, plus there is oxygen in here which is 0.57 atoms of oxygen times 16 plus there is 0 0.01 nitrogen times 14 all right and then plus 0 0.003 times 32. So this will give us the molecular weight of fuel. So that happens to be, in this case, 22.56 roughly. Okay? So now, if we multiply this molecular weight of fuel by 22.56, okay, this is molecular weight of air, this is molecular weight of air, and this is molecular weight of fuel. So now what we get is here, total, will be air to fuel ratio which is grams of oxygen. This, if you do the math here, it comes out to be 6.45. So this is the air to fuel ratio. In other words, 6.45 grams of air are required, air are required per gram of fuel.
in this case biomass or it is the same thing 6.45 pounds of air per pound of fuel or 6.45 kilograms of air per kilogram of fuel so that is the reason we call it air to fuel ratio this is a ratio this 6.45 is the ratio so for every unit mass of fuel you need 6.45 units of air so that's how we determine air to fuel ratio i hope now this is clear